Hi, welcome back to Kofki Drones. So, a few days ago I posted a video on this when it just arrived and I just wanted to do an update video. So, what do I feel about it? So, I've had a fly with it. I was going to record it, but there's no point because I'm going to see my fingers move. You're not going to tell, even if I was using this to control the drone. So, you just have to take my word for it. So, as you can see, I've modified the screen quite a bit. You can do this by messing with the widgets. I've got timers on here now, and I've also got my monitor, and I've also got a quick look at my position of my sticks. So if you look at the top, my sticks tell me what position they're in. So I converted this to mode one because I bought it mode two, as you probably saw in the other video, and it wasn't the easiest job in the world to do, but. Having been inside it, this is another reason why I'd recommend this. I'm going to leave you a short video coming up now, which is a couple of minutes long, and it's going to show you what the inside looks like, and I'll show you the, how it's connected together and how easy or hard a job it was. It's not a video of me doing it, it's just a video of a quick overview. But I wanted you to see how good this is inside, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside. So you can see these really nice ribbon connectors. So there's no soldered pins or screwed in terminals as you can see everything's on a really nice little ribbon connector which makes it easy to strip down as for modules i have converted this one if you are wanting to buy one of these in mode one i suggest buy one in mode one and don't buy mode two because it's a quite a big job you have to remove both potentiometers take that gimbal out on this side to get the pin and the screws in to sorry to get the pin and the screws out on this side you have to remove the gimbal to put this part on, this screw in here, and there's a little bracket that goes inside here with a spring on that goes into there. You cannot get that in place with the gimbal in, so you have to take the gimbal out. It's quite a big job. And if you wanted to make it so it had dual centered gimbals, you'd simply put the one that comes as spare in the pack into that side as well, so you'd have two. So you would have centered gimbals. But the finish is really nice inside. It's dead easy to get off. There's a screw there on the outer cover. There, 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 and there. Six screws. And then there's two going in the top here. Two Allen screws going in the top. And that's all you have to do to get it out. Really, I'm impressed with the fit and finish inside. And that's, you can see where a module, if you had an internal one, would be. So there is a module board, but not a module on it. And there are the pins that come through that would clip in, that go into your forward one that goes on the back. So yeah, very impressive. I like the way it's all modular and everything comes off. As you can see, even to get these off, there's just two screws on either side and they just lift out. Just be careful because they are on ribbon connectors and ribbon connectors can pull out. Won't necessarily damage them, but you just make sure you put it back in. So that's what it's like inside. And if you can see down here, I don't know if I've got that on my camera, probably let's move it forward a little bit. That is your haptic feedback motor there. So when you get in, it come back and it... You can feel it vibrating your hand, that's that there, and that battery there, the one that maintains the time on your clock and the date. So yeah, all in all, really nice inside. Okay, so you've seen the video of the inside of this. So as you can see, it's really nicely made, the ribbon connectors and everything like that made the fit and finish fantastically. So I've now flown it, and it's absolutely amazing. What I can't tell you, this is going to get faults over the next few months, how reliable it's going to be, and all I can do is update you on that as the time goes on. But what I can tell you is, today, after flying a few times with it, I absolutely love the thing. The sticks feel fantastic, the resolution feels great on them, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. It binds to the bugs, like, have you see, I've got this bound to a bug, I don't think it's on the screen, the bug six. So, it was simply a matter of going into my model, so I went, simply went into model, I changed the name to bug 6, selected a picture, I went down to here, I select multi, I selected bugs, and it automatically put it into bind mode, plugged the battery in the bugs, done. It even set the arm switch on there. I didn't do any of that, it was completely done for me. And I'll just show you that you don't need to do it every time. Just return out of this. So I'll put it back to its main screen. We have the trusty bug six here. It's gonna beep because it's got a low battery, but never mind that bit. I'm gonna plug it in. Beep. 
And there you go. Immediately binds. So there's no messing around. You don't have to bind it every time. It's simple. It's as simple as that. So it is even telling me it's lost the signal. How good is that? Did it do that when it came? Let's plug it in and see if it actually told me it had connected to something. I don't think it does on the way on. Oh yeah it does, yeah, telemetry recovered. And you can see the signal strength there on. Can you see that in top corner? I've obviously set the clock and stuff since. So I've flown this a few times and I've had to go with some other stuff, but mainly this, just to test how good it was on the bugs, if I'd had a range issue or nothing, and I've had nothing. And like I say, I can't tell you how good this is going to be in six months. Oh, all I can tell you is, the one I've got in my hand today is absolutely amazing. This one's spent, sent to me, so it's not a special one, it's a one I got from a shop. But it really is that good. I love the thing, I absolutely do. So before I got into doing what I do, I used to fly RC helicopters. And I'll be honest with you, I never used FR Sky or anything like that. I always flew with the Taba or JR. I had an 18 SZ, I believe they're called. Which is a quite high range model, touch, colour touch screen and stuff. Felt beautiful. And I'm not saying this is as good as that. I'm not. But I'm, what I'm saying is it doesn't feel far behind it. Certainly the screen layout and everything like that is as good as the Fataba one. Except it's not touchscreen on this and it's got as much function. But it doesn't. And the sticks actually don't feel much different. But it's not quite as good as the Fataba. But it's £129. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't fly an RC Heli, I don't think, with the Nirvana. I don't think I would anyway. I've never tried it. Because I don't, I wouldn't feel as comfortable as flying it with this. And that's because of the size, the form factor and the fact that I can do so much in here. And I'm used to this kind of set for flying helis and planes to be honest. So, I think this is going to be an absolute massive winner. So you'll, you've seen on my channel I have a lot of transmitters. So as you know I love the Nirvana. I've got an X-Lite which I'm so so about. I've got all the jumpers. And I also have... An X90 Plus SE, which I haven't posted the video on that I did ages ago, but I will post it to show you what I think of that. And that's been my go-to transmitter. Always has been. It's the one I'll always go back to if I want to fly a plane or a heli. I think this is going to take its place. Well, it is. This is going to take its place, which I never thought would happen. This will take the place of the X90 SE Plus. So that's going to have to go. I'll also probably now get rid of my... I've got a Q7 with the Hall Effect gimbals and I've got the module in the back of that, that'll now go and I'll probably just stick with this, the Nirvana and the X-Lite and they'll probably be the three transmitters I'll stick with and I never thought this had happened but I love this thing so much, it's so easy to program, I love the big screen, I love OpenTX so it's always going to be a winner for me. I'll do a well, I, I might need even do a video. I might just do a quick one minute video every couple of months just telling you what I think of this thing. Is it still going well? I have had any issues with it. But certainly from the videos I've also seen from other people that have got this, I don't think you're going to have a major problem with it. I think this is a definitely highly recommend for me. I think it's a fantastic transmitter for the money. And I don't think you can go far wrong with it. So, thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.